In my last video, we talked about why the rear shocks on many live axle pickup trucks are staggered, with one shock mounted on the front of the side of the axle and the other on the back side. Today, we are going to talk about another aspect of shock placement on live axles, the lateral or side-to-side -side spacing. Hello everyone, I'm Hubert Mace and this is Suspensions Explained. Have you ever noticed how the shocks in some live axle vehicles are mounted quite close to the center of the vehicle, while on others they are mounted much further outboard? This is most obvious on pickup trucks since the axles and shocks are much more visible, especially if you're driving behind them. Here we see a truck that has the shocks located fairly close to the center of the vehicle. Notice how the distance between the shocks is almost the same as the distance from the shocks to the wheels. And here we see another pickup truck but now the shocks are mounted much further outboard. They sit much closer to the wheels and much further from each other. The question is, does this matter? And if it does, why? Let's take a look. To find out if the lateral position of the shocks matters, I've built this computer model of a live axle and I've included two sets of shocks, one set inboard and the other set outboard, so we can look at the difference. We'll start out by looking at what happens when the axle moves straight up and down. What we want to look at is to compare how much the wheels move versus how much the shock moves. So let's move the axle up some arbitrary amount and then we'll measure how much the axle moved versus how much the shocks moved. If I move the axle up to here, for instance, and now measure the distance between the wheel center and the ground, which tells us how far the wheel has moved, you see that it's 121, just over 121 millimeters. Okay, let's see how far the shocks have moved. And we'll start out with the inboard shock. 120.4 millimeters, which is pretty close to 121 millimeters. Now let's compare that to the outboard shock. 120.4. So you can see here that the inboard shock and the outboard shocks have both moved 120 millimeters when the axle moved about 121 millimeters. So those numbers are very close to each other, which tells us that the motion ratio in vertical motion is one to one, meaning for every millimeter that the axle moves, the dampers move about a millimeter, exactly a millimeter as well. But now let's look at this in roll. Let's roll the axle. And again, we'll roll it an arbitrary amount, something like this. And let's measure again how far the wheel moved versus how far the shocks moved. In this case, the wheel moved 70 millimeters. But let's see how far the shocks moved. Let's start out with the outboard shock. 54 millimeters. So not anywhere close to the 70 millimeters that the wheel moved. And now if we look at the inboard shock, it's 37 millimeters, it's even less. What those numbers tell us is that in roll, the motion ratio for an outboard damper is about 0.77, meaning for every millimeter that the wheel moves up in roll, the damper moves 0.77 millimeters. On the inboard, it's even less. The motion ratio there is about 0.53, meaning that for every millimeter that the wheel moves up in roll, the damper moves 0.53 millimeters, or just over half a millimeter. What we see here is that the motion ratio of the shocks, meaning the motion of the shocks relative to the motion of the wheel, is different when the body is moving straight up and down, like it would over road undulations, versus when it is rolling like it would in a turn. So what does this actually mean? When a vehicle is moving down the road, it is constantly moving in response to inputs from the road and from the driver. The body will move up and down over road bumps, but it will also roll when the driver steers around a corner or when one wheel goes over a bump. So the body of the vehicle is moving up and down and also rolling side to side all the time. The job of the shocks is to control that motion and dampen it out, but to do that, the shocks have to move. Unlike a spring, shocks can only provide a force when they are moving. The more they move, the more force they provide and the better they are at damping out the motions of the body. 
But if the motion of the shocks changes, depending on whether the body is moving straight up or down, or whether it is rolling, it is difficult to find a shock setting that works well for both. The ride and handling engineers may be able to find a good setting that controls vertical motions, but then find there is not enough damping during roll motions because there is so much less shock movement during roll than during vertical motion due to the difference in motion ratios. Or they may find an acceptable setting for roll motion and then find the shocks are just too stiff during vertical motion because there is so much more movement and therefore force in the shocks during vertical motion. The closer the shocks are to having the same motion ratio for both vertical and roll motions, the easier it is to find an optimal shock setting that works for both. Let's look at another example. Here is a fictitious vehicle where the shocks are mounted right in the middle of the axle. You can see here that the shocks move with the axle when it moves up and down, but look at what happens when the axle rolls. There is virtually no motion in the shocks at all. In this case, the shocks would dampen body motion just fine when the body moves up and down, but would not dampen roll motion at all. This illustrates the problem suspension engineers are faced with when positioning shocks on live axle suspensions. The further inboard you place the shocks, the less damping you get during body roll. The idea then is to locate the shocks as far outboard as you possibly can. But that leads to another problem. Let's go back to our model showing both the outboard and the inboard shocks. When we look at this model, we can immediately see one of the other problems suspension engineers are faced with when placing shocks on these types of axles. Shocks are fairly tall devices, and there is a frame rail that sits in the same general area where we want to put our shocks. This means we are limited in the possible places we can put the shocks. They can go outboard of the frame rail, or they can go inboard. Of course, outboard of the frame rail is also where the tires sit. So if we want to put our shocks there, we need to make sure there is enough space between the inside wall of the tire and the frame rail. This is not always the case, especially if we have dually tires like we might on a Super Duty pickup truck. In that case, there really isn't much choice, and we are forced to put the shocks on the inboard side of the frame, and we just have to deal with the fact that we won't get as much damping and roll as we will during vertical motions. As always, lots of aspects of suspension design are a compromise, and this is just one of them. Now, so far, we've only talked about live axles, and you might be wondering if this is a problem with independent suspensions as well. Here is an example of an independent suspension. It's a front suspension model, but it could just as easily be a rear. It doesn't really matter. We can move the suspension up like we did with the live axle. In this case, we'll move it up 40 millimeters and see how much the shock moved. If we measure the shock travel, it is 22.6 millimeters which gives us a motion ratio of 0.56, meaning that for every millimeter the wheel moves up, the shock moves up 0.56 millimeters. Now let's do the same thing in roll, meaning one wheel moves up while the other moves down. The wheel has moved the same 40 millimeters, and now the shock has moved the exact same 22.6 millimeters as it did before. This tells us that in an independent suspension, the motion ratio of the shock meaning the motion of the shock relative to the motion of the wheel will always be the same, whether the body is moving straight up and down or rolls side to side. And the problem we were discussing before is only a problem with live axles. Since the motion ratio in independent suspensions does not change, it is easier to find a single shock setting that works well for both vertical and roll motions. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please hit that subscribe and notifications button, and we'll see you next time for more Suspensions Explained.